Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is a walkthrough for Maximum Action, a wonderful indie shooter that is currently in early access on PC. I think it's been made by one guy, and it's absolutely ridiculous. The closest things I can compare it to would be something along the lines of Max Payne or Fear, because it has a fundamental slow motion mechanic in the game. It has lots of weapons, it has some tons of inspirations from wonderful cinema, and it just has a really, really nice feel when it comes to playing the game. And I wanted to bring this to you because it's 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 awesome, it's total action, it's total gameplay, and it doesn't lose itself in the trivialities of all the conventions in modern gameplay now. And what this video is going to be, guys, is I'm going to go through the whole game, I'm going to be using the dodge, I'm going to be using the slow motion, I'm going to be kicking some ass. I'm going to be putting on all the cool guns that I can and diving around like an absolute lunatic for your enjoyment. And then I'm going to do a second run uh, where I'm going to use no slow motion and no diving and I'm going to show you the contrast. And at the moment the game does not have any kind of conventional difficulties to my knowledge, so I'm playing this on a standard difficulty. And you can die quite quickly if you don't use your tools and if you don't kill these enemies. But as you can see from the screen, we've got points popping up, we've got all kinds of neon, we've got cars, we've got mobsters, we've got double guns, we've got all kinds of weapons on the ground. It is it is a first person shooter that has been made by somebody that wants you to enjoy the goofiness and the jank of, of old school first person shooters with some modern sensibilities. And there's an eye for style here, there's an eye for, for score and, and just a really frenetic pace. One thing that you'll notice is it's there's also an eye for being completely unbalanced and broken and, and way too capable because the slow motion in this game is they give you a lot of it so you can you can use it sparingly if you want to or you can go whole hog into it there's even a kind of bunny hopping that you can do with the movement that can sometimes be really useful if you want to do that and there's just a lot of tools here that I'm hoping are going to really resonate into something fantastic and I say that because the game right now is about 15 minutes long you're going to see the entire game and what it has to offer right now if you purchase it. And each of the scenarios are broken down into short missions. The missions themselves are inspired by certain things from cinema or, or other games. And you do these little clumps of, of pure, intense, maximum action. And then you get to the end and you can watch a goofy replay, check your score, or go back in and try to run it slightly differently. And there's a whole host of different weapons in the game. And you can even design your own if you're creatively inclined. And I'm assuming that, give it time, the mods for this are going to be superb, because not only does it have, it has level editors, it has weapon editors, but it, it's just very user-friendly and accessible for people that have an interest in being able to add to it. And as I mentioned, it's all been done by one crazy awesome dude, and I'd never heard of this game. I saw it on one of those cheesy YouTube video clickbait bullshits of here's 10 shooters you've never heard of and half of them are CSGO, 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 CSGO and you sit there thinking is there something wrong with this kid's brain and then luckily this one was shown and, and I googled and looked into it and lo and behold it, it looked absolutely superb and as you can see here it everything that's in this game is gameplay first so you can kick people with both your legs and not fall down. You can kick in mid-air, you can throw your gun, you can pick up enemies' guns as they're dying. You can dual wield any gun you pick up, and there are so many different types that you can mess around with. There's just a wonderful eye for letting the player do what he needs to do to get shit done. And, and look at the chaos, look at how insane this all looks. It runs wonderfully, it feels pretty damn great, all considered. And it's, as I mentioned, it's, it's one guy has done this. And it just, it just really shows what this industry is capable. When you give cool people, creative people, talented people enough time, they can come up with something wonderful. And I'd love to see this person get supported and, and get some people to kind of help him, you know, skew his vision and make this happen quicker. But I don't really know much about the production cycle other than the development documentaries that they've been putting out on the blogs and stuff and on Twitter. So it's... It's one of those things where there's so much potential here and so much interesting stuff happening as we pick up the shotgun. This shotgun is really, really good. My only criticism is it fires a little slow, but it's absolutely phenomenal. And if you want to play a game where the guns feel great, this is your game. Because they just, they truly do feel so fun. And there's destruction as well, which I've not been able to mention. You can break all kinds of pillars, you can send things flying, there's chunks, there's all kinds of madness going on, and you might have noticed on some of these gunfights that doesn't this look a little bit like certain gunfights from Hard Boiled, that, 
phenomenal action movie that John Woo made back in the, the early 90s, and you would be absolutely correct for thinking that, because this game is 1000% inspired by one of the greatest action movies ever made. And this level is wearing its its homage on its sleeves, and you're, you're going to see Mad Dog coming up in a moment, who is one of the best characters in that movie, and an absolute Terminator lunatic, and it's just joyous and wonderful. And it's going to lead you to the, the first boss fight of the game. And there's a bit of a bug in the boss fights, because it doesn't pause the gameplay. So if you position yourself correctly, and you put your reticle on the middle of the screen, on the screen you can kill the boss before he attacks you. And uh, I don't do it here, because I, I just want to merc him with the AA-12 which is by far my favourite gun in the game at the moment. It's incredibly powerful, and it's just Flick City if you know what you're doing. But you might see that glitch on, on the chef guy coming up. But just look at the environments. Everything about them is, is sculpted in a manner that lets everything blow up and make you feel like an absolute monster. And then there's the motif at the end here with the, the credits and the VHS, and you can actually customise your guy and how he looks like, and you can change his name and put in all kinds of different details, but I'm not that bothered about that at the moment, I, I just like playing the game. And I've looked into the score system a little bit just by playing, and I kinda can't figure it out. You would think in a game like this that you would get a multiplier for every consecutive kill you do quickly, and you would be timed as that multiplier decays, and that's how you would want to do it, and maybe there would be some kind of min-max way to, to get score by making sure you dive, making sure you, you slow time, and making sure you hit the enemy in the head or something, but it doesn't seem to work like that in this early version. So all I can really see is, is what it says in the top. If you look at it, you get, you get mega combo kills, you get slow-mo advantages, and... If you kill a lot of people in quick succession, you get advantages too. Scoring-wise, I've managed to get anywhere between five to, to 6,000 points per level, but I can't seem to do any better than that. And it doesn't matter what I really do or how I play. So I'm hoping that the scoring either gets explained a little bit better in, in, future, in future releases, or they, they change it in a way that makes it more conducive to replaying and, and playing it for score. Because I, I love playing games for score, it's one of the things that modern games seem to be forgetting. They seem to forget that if you put a good score system in your game, you give it legs and life that it would not normally have. And it kind of breaks my heart that right now Doom Eternal doesn't have a scoring mode, when it has all the potential in the world to already be an endless game. And then you have a game like this, which is such a fun diversion in first person shootery. If this was a 5 hour experience, I would be playing the living shit out of it, but when it's just 15 minutes, unfortunately you you kind of see what it has to offer before you really get to sink your teeth into it, and there are some wonderful homages here that you're going to see, guys. Some really, really great moments. At the beginning of this mission, if you turn around, there is an M60 waiting for you just here, and I'm going to pick this up because it's very, very useful, and this mission's probably one of the hardest missions in the campaign at the moment. But we're just going to start off by murking some dudes here. There's a guy behind the fish tank over there. I recommend you always pick up the HP if you can, because you can overfill your HP, and if you get into a bad situation, you'll be absolutely fine. One of my criticisms of the game is that there, there are no checkpoints on the levels, so when you die you go all the way back to the start. However, the game is very short and it's designed to be played in bursts, that it actually complements the, the style a little bit. And I'm hoping when harder difficulties turn up, maybe they'll implement checkpoints, maybe they'll change how that works, I'm, I'm not entirely certain. My second criticism of the game is there seems to be some kind of negative acceleration on the mouse when you look up and down. So for some reason the Y axis has a negative multiplier on its on its setting, and I don't know how you turn it off. Because when you look left and right in this game, it's dynamic, there's no acceleration, there's no smoothening, there's no dampening, it's absolutely fine. But when you look up and down, you are fighting the mouse to do so, and I wish that both axes were, were the same. Because for somebody like me that plays a game like this for, for aim, and wants to have really, really cool looking aim, and really fast and really deadly, watch this. See that? That's the problem with the, the little vignette at the start. Because you can still control your character, and because the game still runs, you can assassinate the bosses in a cutscene. And it's kind of funny the first time you do it, but you realise it's it's super broken. And I don't know if they'll ever address it, because maybe they want it to be like that, but it is pretty funny. And you might have noticed that the game looks kind of janky. It looks kind of goofy and broken, and I nearly went through the graphics earlier on, and some of the bodies are contorting, and the geometry looks weird, and it, it's all kinds of seven shades of madness. And that's part of the charm. It's 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 almost like that that goat game that they brought out. Is it that goat simulator? Where when you play that game, it's it's got these wonderful moments of just absolute madness because things aren't working as you expect them to work. But that's kind of part of what makes that game so endearing. And this game is a very competent shooter with some really fun mechanics and a really good eye for for the stuff that I appreciate in, in shooters. 
but it's also got this this wonderful almost like haphazardously half-assed aesthetic going on that's completely intentional and it wouldn't surprise me if it started out as a bug and an issue and as they tried to fix it they got some feedback that people thought it was funny and they kind of committed to it because it definitely gives it character that it might not necessarily have had without it but here is the jungle level that reminds me of goldeneye this game wears a lot of influences on its sleeve and this one right here just it reminds me of jungle from from that game where you take on is it zinnia in that that level and she's got the the, the p90 which is called like the rcp something rcp90 and she's got the grenade launcher as well and she's dual wielding she's an absolute fiend but here's some 1911s diving around with this very odd looking laser sight there's also a bit of a scripting problem on this level that i found where if you go through the level linearly like you normally do you will trigger the spawn in this next room but if you jump on top of these boxes with the dive you can go on the top area and it never triggers the baddies so you can walk directly to the end and the only person who challenges you is that guy and what i'm going to do here guys is i'm going to walk backwards and i'm going to show you the trigger line and you'll see the the four enemies that turn up here so boom that was it just then and i say four there's this there might be three. Oh no there's four there's four there's the last guy just there this right here is probably the hardest level to score on because there doesn't seem to be much you can do. And you'll notice here that I've got two guys in the cutscene and you can kind of see how the perspective and your model works when you dive. Which is kind of interesting, isn't it? So many goofy things about this. Great aesthetic, great music, really, really stupid, really, really fun and a good sense of humour. And then now we have the, the cowboy level, which is my personal least favourite level. And the only reason for that is, uh, not only does there seem to be no HP on this level at all, so it's easily the most difficult level to, to wipe on, even though it's not difficult. But all the guns fire really slowly, so when you use slow motion, it feels like all you're doing is waiting for the single action to happen. And because of that, I use the sawn off for the whole thing, because I'm just I'm not interested in watching Lever Rifles, Lever Rifles cycle, or watching him thumb the hammer on, on some revolvers. And it's beautiful if you like the Western aesthetic. It's a nice homage to all the great western moments in video games and, and popular culture but i want to i want to do feeds and i want to kill people and flick around and this level doesn't really afford that and it's it's also the level that i've probably died on the most because if you overextend you die really quickly on this one i'm getting stuck here and everything's kind of going weird but we managed to put him down you'll also notice i'm not the biggest fan of dual wielding I, I like dual wielding, I think it's a cool feature, but I also like the, the sanctity and the grace of a single weapon. I think the ADSing in this game is kind of busted as well. Some of the, the iron sights and the perspectives aren't where they need to be, and I'd love to see him go in there and tweak them a little bit, but as it stands, hip firing is so accurate that it's it's one of those things that if you hip fire, you're going to hit your target. And my only criticism of the, the hip fire is when you fire, the reticle does this jutter effect. And I don't know if it's meant to simulate bloom, but I wish you could turn it off. Because there's when I'm shooting the accurate guns, like the, the super automatic ones, and I see that jutter up and down, it makes it look like I've got aim assist on. It makes it look like it's it's like aimbotting and silent aiming people. And I, I don't like that aesthetic at all. It, there's something about it. I know it's the smallest thing, guys, but when it, it bumps up and down like that, it really triggers me. But that's it. That's all my criticisms. Everything else is wonderful. You know, think of a game. When was the last time you got to reenact Bunker from Goldeneye running around with double AK 47s in a super arcadey shooter that made you want to replay it and you had a good time with? Other than Time Splitters, I can't think of a single game that's managed to achieve what they, they do with this level. And this level is. If this level had cameras to shoot, it would it would be a perfect homage, in my opinion. Like at the end, if you jumped off the dam or something, that would be hilarious. Even though that's you know, mixing your metaphors, you could say. But just look how fun this looks. Look at the details of the brass casings being ejected, and the muzzle flash that looks really nice, the double guns. It's just a wonderful love letter to people that like over-the-top action and, and really, really silly, goofy shooting. And it's, it's funny that I say goofy shooting. The shooting on this game is better than half the AAA titles right now. The precision, the accuracy, the feel of how lethal you can be if your aim is good. It's really, really, really nice. And it's hard to... It's hard to do as well. It can be really easy to just assume that every game has good gun feel and, and, and a nice and satisfying sensation when you shoot the weapons. But it doesn't. And at the moment, I'm on such a shooter kick 
that I really appreciate the the small touches that people put into their games to make them as as good as they are and this is no different like the gore in this the the detail and the pixels and all the interesting effects they've got going on that's adhering to this wonderful aesthetic but at the same time making it more evolved and just a little bit fresher than the the old games that this is obviously inspired by you know there's no regenerating health here there's there's no slow motion there's no, sorry, there's no moving in slow motion the whole time because you feel like you're carrying a pack horse. You don't have two weapon limit. You can literally do what you want to do with this game and it's... That's what makes it so goddamn fun, you know? That was weird. That picture right there had me holding a shotgun. I didn't notice that. And then here is the final level of the game, guys, at the moment until uh, whatever the next update is. You start with this magnum here, which is very powerful, and you get attacked by a helicopter. I think that this is probably one of the best levels in the game as well. Uh, my favourite levels are the... Pretty much every level, except for the cowboy one and the bunker one. The bunker and the cowboy one and the jungle one, I think those levels are more diverse. And I think that they're wonderful nods and winks. But I think compared to the other ones, they're just not as fun to play. This level here gives you access to this, this crazy gun, which is the submachine gun of nearly every 80s B-movie action that they brought out. It's also the gun that you use in Code Veronica. I think it's called like a Calypso or something. It's it's an interesting submachine gun and it looks so bizarre. And just using this on this level made me happy because it's such an odd gun. Uh, my only criticism here would be that I think there could be a couple more enemies in some of these encounters because some of this, this rooftop feels a bit empty. And I don't really know what this is an homage to. I heard somebody mention that it might be an homage to, to maybe the Matrix, but I'm not entirely certain. But this part here, you could have added two or three extra dudes in this. I think they could just maybe tweak a couple more of the encounters to make it a bit more satisfying, a bit more fulfilling. This really feels like they've gone for more of a, a pacing that's less about the maximum action and more about the, the sense of moving through the world. And then you get attacked by two helicopters, which go down really quickly. Which is kind of funny, because this is a submachine gun and it's just wrecking them, which I just think is wonderful. And then this right here is probably my favourite gunfight in the game. Because as you're falling, you can slow time and you can kill three or four guys on the spin. And it looks really cool. I was a little slow then and I missed, but it still looked kind of awesome. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all that the guys managed to make. And if you know anything about production cycles and, and building your own game... And doing everything yourself, it's its not an easy thing to do. As I mess around here with the sliding and the, the bunny hopping and the bouncing, and I'm doing it all, all kinds of wrong. But that's it, guys. That's, that's the end. To be continued. And I cannot wait to see what this guy does. Because if it's anything like what he's already done, I love to see the date when this game is completed and it's got all of the features and all the stuff. Because I, I can't say enough good things about how awesome, yet brief... Uh, this wonderful experience is. So if you like what you just witnessed, ladies and gentlemen, go seek maximum action, go support it. It is absolutely worth your time. Thank you for watching, and you take care now.